If you haven't heard of NACLO, it stands for the North American Computational Linguistics Olympiad, and this is one of the problems from it. It's super cool, it's a way to discover linguistics without knowing anything about linguistics. So this problem looks at the Ho-Chunk language in the Siouan family, spoken by 250 people in Iowa, Wisconsin, and it's about a stress system. So I'm going to skip the text and just explain some things here. So we have the word kangaroo, and if you heard how I said it, kangaroo, kangaroo. The final syllable has what's called primary stress. It's the loudest, it's the longest in the word, kangaroo. And we also see that kang, the beginning, has a little bit of stress on it. It's not as strong, but there is some stress there still, kangaroo. But ga is just neutral, it kangaroo. We barely pronounce the vowel there. So an interesting fact that you might want to learn in general about the problems is that if you have primary and secondary stress, they're usually always two away from each other. So it's never side by side. And that's just a general fact that you can apply to other NACLO problems. So here's some NACLO words and how stress is assigned. So the English translations are not necessary. So I say we just like ignore all of these things right here and instead just focus on the stress patterns. Now, if the two vowels are the same, such as ah, the syllable has a long vowel sound, okay? If the vowels are different, then the syllable combines the two distinct vowel sounds, okay? So it combines them. It uses a few symbols not present in English. We have two vowels, and j, I think, is the consonant. So we're asked to, we're going to be asked to figure out what the pattern is, because on the next page, we're going to have to fill out the stress patterns for each of these words. So if something is pointed out in the instructions, it's probably important. So I'm thinking about this case. What if you have two vowels versus just one vowel? That seems like it's going to make a difference. And same with something like I. That might make a difference too, depending on what vowels we see. So let's see what the patterns are. So we have hoke we. So we have stress on the final syllable here. Wani ji gra. So G, the third syllable is stressed. So right now it looks like, if I had to guess in my mind, it looks like the third syllable has stress on it. So that's just abbreviation for third syllable primary stress. And then in the third example, hokiwa roke. So third syllable stress, and then the fifth syllable has secondary stress. So I'm just gonna put a little dash down there. That's my guess. And if I keep going down, it looks like that's a good pattern. But I see an issue when I start to get to speak to last night and knock down. It's just a neutral, then the primary. So for this one, it looks like the second syllable gets primary stress, and then the fourth syllable gets secondary stress. But that's not a pattern that is going to work for every word. So we're gonna to have to revisit what we talked about when it comes to the vowel length, because I think that has something to do with it, otherwise it wouldn't be in the instructions. So if we take a look at the examples on the right, we see double vowels in each of these cases. So really what's happening here is that when you have double vowels, it's taking up two neutral positions. So the way that this works in terms of order is actually very simple. In terms of stress, it is going to be neutral, neutral, primary, neutral, secondary, and then likely neutral after that. But, so that's just for a single vowel. But if you have double vowels, that N is acting as two in this case. So it's going to be something like this, N, then P, then N, then S, then so on. So with that information, we can now fill out our words. So we're just filling out ends for the first two vowels, and then we'll do P after that. So he pirak, neutral, neutral, primary. Uh, so we're gonna do neutral, neutral, primary, and then we'll do neutral after that. There's no fifth syllable for secondary stress. Now this is interesting with Y. We have two vowels here, A and E, so we can put the stress, the primary stress on the second syllable because that's gonna be our third vowel and then neutral, and then secondary. Uh, in the one on the top, we have two vowels, so we'll do a neutral, primary, neutral, secondary, and then neutral after that. And then in the top one, our first two vowels are neutral, neutral, then we'll do primary, neutral, we'll do secondary, neutral, and I'm going to assume 
at the very end that we're also going to have neutral for the very last syllable because it's usually one syllable gets primary stress and one syllable gets secondary stress. But just to check, we can see if it says anything in the instructions for how stress would be assigned in that case. But uh, if we take a look, other stress syllables are indicated with S for secondary and syllables with no stress are indicated with N. You can only have one primary stress, but it can have multiple secondary stresses according to the instruction, um, but it's not quite sure. So uh, in this case, this is likely the answer. If there was going to be a variation, which I doubt it, then we would have secondary stress on the A at the end as well. But this is how we can solve problems, and this is just a general strategy for solving anything to do with tones or stress, because normally it alternates.